Hi, this is Stephen at Own a Disso. Now, HID Evolution kindly, kindly sent me a 15 inch MSI GT63 Titan uh, with a full power GTX 1080 to, to review. Now, before we take a look at it, a quick word about HID Evolution. Now, HID Evolution is a reseller for many different brands of laptops. We're looking at uh, Alienware, Asus, Gigabyte, Aorus, uh, Evoc, which are Clevos, of course, uh, Razer. Uh, as well as uh, as Dell. I don't know, the good thing about them is that uh, you can uh, do a lot of configurations uh, and uh, customization. For example, um, clicking on on the Dell, um, you can even get the uh, the new XPS 15, for example, and have it uh, have it repasted uh, with liquid metal. You can even uh, even get the uh, i9 version. So that is nice uh, to to have. So even on uh, on Alienware, you can pick them and uh, you can customize how you want it and include uh, things like uh, like repacing with liquid metal. They'll do that on uh, all of these laptops and it's all warranted. Now the GT63 Titan is a very powerful uh, laptop. Now don't let this 15 inch chassis fool you. At full load, it pulls 259 watts and it takes some serious cooling. I really recommend that you have someone like HID Evolution replace it with liquid metal. It has two large fans with very big blades uh, that move plenty of air with little noise. Using the MSI Dragon Center software, I tested uh, using the Sport and Turbo settings. They are basically high performance and GPU overclocked respectively. I also tested using the Auto Fan and Max Fan profiles to gauge how the upper and lower limits of the temperature and fan noise were. The software lets you choose a basic fan profile, which allows you to set a fixed fan percentage or advanced, which allows the creation of a custom fan profile depending on what the temperature is. But to be honest, these fans are pretty quiet. At load, the auto fan runs at uh, 35 decibels. The CPU fan uh, spinning at 2857 RPM and the GPU uh, fan at 3750 RPM. Cracking up the uh, cooler boost fan only increases the volume to 38 decibels. The GPU fan spins at the same, uh, same rate, only the CPU fan increases to 3779 RPM. I was asked to see what fan speed I could set uh, whilst keeping the temperatures generally below the 90 degree mark. HID Evolution apply a 80 millivolt undervolt out of the box and uh, this is great. And this is the first time I've seen anyone actually do this and it gets a big thumbs up from me. I increased this to 144 millivolts and was able to use the basic fan control to get 33 decibels, which is pretty good. Here are the chassis temperatures um, using the auto fan. The center and top parts of the keyboard are at 38 to 48 degree, uh, 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, the AWSD key area is cool, but interestingly, there is a hot spot on the trackpad. The palm rest areas are cool and underneath there is a lot of heat being uh, built up over the internal components as high as 58 degrees. Let's see if the turbo fan helps actually uh, remove this heat. The keyboard is largely unchanged, but underneath we do see some big changes. I actually ran a disk benchmark here to show this spinning uh, drive that, that actually does get quite hot as well when downloading games, so that's about 35 degrees. The big difference is the 20 to 20 degree reduction inside. Here is a summation on the performance. As mentioned before, we have the turbo mode, which uh, overclocks the GPU and the, the sport or high performance mode. Looking at the turbo mode, I got an average of 122 FPS across six games at 1080p, max settings using the max fan. The GPU averaged 80 degrees Celsius and the CPU uh, 73 degrees. Note that some games uh, like Battlefield 1 still are hot, uh, hitting about 90 degrees. Switching to the auto fan, did see a slight reduction in boost clocks and uh, a four point reduction in FPS. As you can see though, we uh, see an increase of about eight to 10 degrees uh, in temperature. Interestingly, sport mode didn't see that much improvement in temperatures. Undervolting the CPU by 145 millivolts and uh, netted a nine degree reduction in CPU temperature. So I really recommend doing that, especially if you aren't using liquid metal. The CPU used uh, up to 76 watts uh, during video rendering, but during gaming, CPU power usage was, uh, uh, was less and averaged about 3890 MHz, which is great. No throttling. During long CPU workloads, uh, such as video rendering, it uh, power throttles an average 3060 MHz. The GPU can use up to 187 watts, so you can see that that actually does take a lot of cooling. 
Here's a clear closer look inside. You have four heat pipes for the six core i7-8758 CPU and four for the GTX 1080. That's quite a bit of copper, so it's amazing that this laptop only weighs six pound 12 ounces or three kilos. The GTX 1080 is also an MXM card, so you will be able to replace it or upgrade it in the future. It's the only 8th gen 15.6 inch BJ laptop with a GTX 1080. To the left, you see the five watt subwoofer and two vacant RAM slots. My unit comes with two 8 gigabyte sticks of DDR4 2666 megahertz of RAM, which must be under the motherboard. To the bottom left, you see the M.2 PCI Express slot. Mine is a 256 gig with write speeds of uh, 1,617 megabytes per second and read speeds of 1,700 megabytes per second. To the right, we have a two and a half inch drive bay and above that, the 75 watt hour battery. That is good for three hours, 15 minutes, as this laptop has G-Sync and no Optimus. The Wi-Fi card is a killer 1550 AC, which is a rebranded Intel 9260. This is uh, actually placed underneath the heat pipe, so switching it out is not straightforward. Now, aside from the performance, the screen is a killer feature for me. It is simply stunning. You don't get any super slim bezels here, but the colors are really crisp and they're good on this 120 hertz, three millisecond 1080p panel. Probably the best I have seen. You get 100% of sRGB, 82% of NTSC, and 88% of Adobe RGB. This is perfect for photo, video work, and gaming. That three millisecond uh, Chai, uh, chai Mei uh, panel also has less ghosting than my 120 hertz Clevo. Its brightness is middle of the pack, but it's much brighter than the Dell G7 LG panel. Consequently, you do get some fidelity loss when uh, and bright light is on it, particularly if it is tilted back. Viewing angles from the side are good, but as is typical with the TN panels, you get color degradation if tilted back. I noticed no dead pixels and no backlight bleed. If you have uh, had uh, an MSI laptop uh, over the past few years, there will be no surprises to its build quality. You have an aluminum uh, top, which uh, is fine, but sounds tinny and hollow when you tap it. The screen has a lot of flex, but uh, the hinges are reasonably stiff. At the top of the panel, you have a full HD webcam. This is nice, as uh, many uh, of these expensive laptops cheap out and come with a 720p one. The back lid is also made of aluminum with a glowing uh, decals and a logo. The Steel Series keyboard has 1.9 millimeters of travel and feels good. It has a mechanical shielding uh, to make it uh, very solid and has 45 key anti-ghosting capability. Using the Steel Series software, you can choose standard lighting uh, configurations and assign a function to each individual key. You can also change the color of each individual key and how it is displayed. Using apps, you can configure the keyboard to notify you about, uh, about certain things. For example, in Counter-Strike Go, um, there's uh, as one such app, and this can be configured to show you your health or ammo status. The lighting on the keys are great, the brightness of which is uh, controlled by some keys near the number pad. At the top of the keyboard are four buttons. You have the power button, steel series software, a program shortcut button, and the cooler boost fan button. Now alongside these buttons is the speaker grill with uh, four two watt speakers. Sound of which can be configured using the Anahimic uh, software available in the Windows Store. The Synaptics trackpad is large and smooth. Scrolling works well, but pitch to zoom is not so good. The separate mouse buttons are large and are good to use, but they are rather loud. Underneath, there is a large air intake, a five watt subwoofer and very large feet. Now gaining access inside is easy. Just regular Phillips head screws. And I noticed that there's no warranty sticker if you buy it through HID Evolution. Now with those large speakers, I was expecting some serious sound, but you know, it's pretty average really at 72 decibels. Still, the fans are quiet, so games and movies are easily heard. There's no getting around it. The chassis is very chunky, much thicker than even the Dell G7. On the left-hand side, you have a headphone and mic jacks, um, line out and a line in port. You uh, then have a, a large gap to a USB 2 port and finally the Kensington lock. I would have actually liked to have seen uh, perhaps an air exhaust vent here. Now around the back, there is a, a power connector, mini display port 1.2 and a HDMI port. Now both are good for 4K at 60 Hertz. There is a USB 3.1 type C, but it's not Thunderbolt 3. And finally you have the killer ethernet port. On the right hand side, we have an SD card reader, 
and I'm pleased to confirm that the SD card uh, most sticks in most of the way and finally you have three USB 3 ports. Now underneath you will notice there's a little hole which you can use to reset the CMOS without having to take the back off. I think that's a quite a nice touch. Along the underside at the front uh, are what appear to be two grills. Now one is actually blocked off which I find is quite strange as that is where the uh, hard drive which uh, uh, whilst the other one is, uh, is, is open. Gaming on, the, uh, on this is a joy because the 120Hz G-Sync display is buttery smooth. Even without G-Sync or V-Sync uh, active I saw no tearing. Frame rates averaged uh, near the 120 uh, FPS mark so in fact a 1080p resolution is spot on for gaming. That coupled with the fast 3 millisecond response time meant there was no ghosting and that the colours were really good. If you are a competitive gamer then this laptop is perfect for you. Battlefield 1 Ultra settings we averaged 120 FPS on sport mode and 125 FPS with the turbo mode. Now compared to the uh, Max-Q 1080 in the Zephyrus there is no comparison. Battlefield uh, likes uh, fast CPU so an overclocked i7-7820HK and a GTX 1070 can actually keep up with it. But note how the faster clocked i7-8700K in the Sager pushes that 1080 even further at this resolution. Doom, like Battlefield 1 at 1080p, loves a fast CPU, so again we see the Sager NP9877 power head, but at 142fps the GT63 performs great. Far Cry 5, we get 103fps, which is perfect. Now I do throw in a GTX 1060 laptop here with the same CPU to give you an idea of just how much extra performance you get, nearly double. PUBG is quite a punishing game. At uh, a GTX 1060 laptop gets 160 FPS, but the GTX 1080 on the GT63 uh, gets 127 FPS and overclocks like a champ and matches the bigger Sager. Rainbow Six Siege at max settings is tough. You can drop it to ultra and get much higher frame rates, but this shows that if the CPU is taken out of the equation, then the GTX 1080 in the GT63 performs right up there with the Sager NP9877. In Rise of the Tomb Raider, it beats the Max-Q ASUS by 12% and matches the performance of the larger Acer Predator 17X. Not bad for such a light machine. Time Spy produces some solid scores, showing that the 6-core CPU is, uh, is much more capable than the outgoing i7-7700HQ. 7,368 points puts it right up there with an overclocked Alienware 17R4. In my non-gaming tests, I ran it at uh, stock and also with all six cores set at 4.1 GHz using throttle stop and a nerd volt applied. Sure, the six cores don't stay at 4.1 uh, due to power limitations, but we still see some improvement. In Cinebench, we go from uh, 1185 points to uh, 1241 points, which is about the same score you get uh, from the much more expensive i9-8950HK. It beats the Dell G7 quite easily. Testing how it performs so when running a GPU test and Cinebench concurrently, you can see that the GT63 maintains a solid performance over the Dell G7. This GT63 is a serious multitasker. In my 4GB 1080p handbrake encode, we see the same time as an overclocked desktop i7-7700K. Unfortunately, due to power restraints, the CPU cannot maintain a high uh, performance, so you see a huge gap between the, uh, this and the i7-8700K. Finally, Adobe Premiere Pro. Rendering the same 4GB uh, video file using the CPU, we see a 23 minutes, 21 seconds, which is faster than the same CPU in the Aero 15W. Applying my overclock, we shave off a minute and a half. This clearly outperforms the i7-7820HK, so it's a no-brainer getting this CPU. Note, using the GPU to accelerate the render, the GTX 1080 does it uh, about half a minute faster than uh, the GTX 1060. In all, it's a great laptop. Sure, it's not going to win any design awards, but it's functional, it is fast, and the screen is great for gamers and content uh, producers alike. There's a lot of power in this laptop, so good cooling is essential, and I really recommend applying liquid metal to it. The temperatures you see in uh, my tests are best case. Use stock paste and that GPU will always be in the mid to high 90s, I am sure. Now, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.